You're listening to the Limitless Broadcasting Network. All it takes is faith and trust. Oh, and something I forgot. Dust. Just a little bit of pixie. I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. You're a wizard, Harry. Turn to page 394. Of course it's happening inside your head, Harry. Why should that mean that it's not real? Welcome Pixie Dusters, we're your favorite hosts. I'm Sammy. And I'm Ashley. Welcome to the Pixie Dust Twins podcast featuring Dan. Cheers. Nice. Nice. It's middle of the afternoon and you have coffee. Oh yeah, I, I didn't sleep until about 6 30 this morning. So ah, wow. fun fact. I have I cold turkey stopped drinking coffee. Why would you do that to you? And wow. I've been I have been going, I've been two and a half weeks. Wow. wow, that's a long time. Okay. Well, you're doing pretty good. I never would have guessed. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, so I've been, I did have a little caffeine today. I had pet, I had cherry coke. Um, but uh yeah, I coffee just wasn't I, I've noticed that when I was drinking coffee, it wasn't my body wasn't liking it very much. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, let's try stopping and see if it regulates my body. Mm-hmm. And it did. So um, I, I've also been eating more from home, which has helped as well. So mm-hmm. I have a fruit smoothie every morning um, with actual like real fruit and mm-hmm. Greek yogurt and spinach and all the things. So I've been trying to drink healthier things in the morning for myself. That's good. That's, that's really I'm about good. ready to put away my coffee maker so it doesn't tempt me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I went through that phase for a while, for about four or five years, I was off coffee. Like pretty much mm-hmm. for the same reason. Like my body was just like, no, I don't want it. Yep. Pretty much is what I've been getting every time I drink it. I'm like, eh, now I feel like crap. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. I am off coffee. So right now we're good because it's middle afternoon. We'll see what happens in the first time we film in the morning. Right. Mm-hmm. True, true. We'll see. Tea, green um, tea, that helps. Yes, mm-hmm. tea is good for you. It's yeah, antioxidants. I, I don't stuff. like I don't like green tea though. I like mm-hmm. black tea. Is that good for me? Still has caffeine. Mm-hmm. I mean, little, it's not tea. the caffeine that's the problem. It's the espresso. Because gotcha. mm-hmm. well, I, mean, I can still have caffeine and other things. It's right. just the espresso doesn't go well with me. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Well, it might actually work. I mean, there is caffeine, but it's like significantly yeah. less than coffee. Way less. Yeah. 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 So we'll, we'll, we'll try that route, but mm, okay. we are entering the last three episodes of our Hogwarts summer. I can't believe it. We're here. Mm-hmm. It's the end. We finally yes. did it after what a year of talking about literally. It. Yes. Um, and, and yeah, we're entering the last kind of last three. So this one is, um, we're talking about, uh, the wizarding world of Harry Potter in universal Florida, but also I'm shoving in some Hogwarts legacy because literally this game is amazing and it should be, it, it's pretty much canon now, um, mm-hmm. on how they interwove things into the game. So I feel like it's a good one to at least talk about. So you guys know what it's about and give you our listeners, uh, some insight into it so if you haven't played it yet i Mm -hmm. highly encourage you to do so so let's we're going to do hogwarts legacy first to get through it because it's not going to take that long and then we'll go into wizarding world so all of us can have a conversation because i am the only one who have played hogwarts legacy between the three of us i believe right no one else has played it i can't commit the time to that so i did not well i knew you didn't i didn't know if dan might have um um yeah we we looked how much time i've put into this game 18 days of hours since february yeah i just i can't do that Mm -mm. um you get a notification you have logged this much time it's like your console trying to tell you something Mm -hmm. well i mean my council for sims also logs how many hours i've done and um, i've been i tells you to touch grass (laughs) Um, i still go outside with my dog and walk my dog i just 
there are certain days I don't want to do anything. So I play video games. Mm -hmm. I blame my boyfriend. (laughs) Fair. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But okay. So in Hogwarts Legacy, you are a student back in the early 1890s when Phineas Nigeris, Nigelis, Nigeris? Phineas Black, um, the, mm-hmm. the guy we've talked about in, yes, in the, uh, the portrait the previous right? episodes. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. he is actually headmaster during this time. Now, what's weird is you come in as a fifth year student. So you don't get to start as a first year. You're starting as a fifth year, which is very unheard of. It's only happened like one other time is what they said. Uh, and he, your character can actually see this ancient hidden magic that only certain types of witches and wizards have the ability to see. So it's like this ancient magic that's very, very powerful. Um, now, while you're at Hogwarts, of course, there is an adventure that goes along with it, but you're also there to complete coursework, like learn spells, you get to rescue beasts, create potions, and grow a variety of plants, all in the Room of Requirement. The Room of Requirement's there for you. You pretty much get to do all these different amazing things in there, and it's really fun. Hmm. Um, but the the storyline is a goblin named Ranrock is plotting something, and a war has broken out between the witches and wizards and the goblins and the poachers around the school. So it's your job to stop them before the school year's over. Hmm. Uh, and it's it's pretty amazing. You you get to choose everything. You um, like they have you do like quiz type things to see what your house would be if you answered certain things. But if you don't like the answer, you can say, I want to choose my house. And it, you can choose your house. And then the sorting hat says it out loud. Um, you get to customize your wand fully. There's uh, clothing choices you get to customize there's it's just it is it is like harry potter and sims combined and it makes me so happy nice yeah i can see that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is a open world you can fly and go anywhere literally the castle is so detailed you feel like you are actually getting to experience being a student in the school as you always dreamed of like the first time i played i was a gryffindor because that's who i am and you get to go into the Gryffindor common room and you're like, you just, I don't know, it it feels very interactive. And as you're running around the castle, like we've imagined what the castle looks like in our heads from the books and different things, but, and we see things from the movies, but this actually lets you go through it all. Like every single, all the way down to the kitchens, you get to go into the kitchen, you uh, nooks and crannies and Mm -hmm bathrooms you get to go into the bathroom all the bathroom stalls that are around there because there's hidden like chests and stuff for you to get money and whatnot but oh my gosh it's it it takes hours to go through all of this like I'm still working on it to um hit all the achievements that you can do with this game it's pretty amazing um like the first person shooter format like the like the POV or is it more like a sims like a, like it's a, a sims like you see the so person you watch yourself like from yeah yeah like, okay. yep, yep. you're third person omniscient gotcha yes and you are controlling your person as as they're walking around okay. um and the I graphics like the are really good yeah. they still have some glitches every once in a while like mm-hmm. if you're playing too long or it doesn't load correctly the colors won't look right but mm-hmm. i haven't had any other glitches other than like color changing so mm-hmm. it's it's being it's running really well yeah. so um, not only do you battle poachers and goblins, but you also have to uh, battle trolls, mongrels, which are wolves, uh, dung bogs, which are weird creatures, and a lots and lots and mm-hmm. lots of spiders. Nah. Oh, I mm-hmm. mean, these spiders, all the spiders you face are your size or bigger. I mm-hmm. have to, I have to destroy a, um, what's his name? Aragog, I have to destroy three of those throughout the game. Mm-mm. And they attack you. And no. they spin you in webs if you don't do it right. No. <laughs> I've had to not. get over my fear of those spiders. Because the first time I did it, it was like a den. And there was like seven spiders around me. And I had to somehow protect myself. Uh-uh. No. Lots, I'd, I'd rather go against the trolls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Like I said, you get to customize your wardrobe as you go along. Your you get to customize your wand. So there's you already have your wand, like your wand chosen from Ollivanders. You get to go to Ollivanders in mm-hmm. ha- um Hogsmeade. Um, there's not a Diagon Alley yet, apparently. Um, 
but then there's like wand handles and you get to customize those wand handles. You get to customize your broom once you get a broom. <laughs> and then also because you've seen death, um, you get to ride a festral. Like there's other than a broom, you can also ride a festral, a hippogriff or a grab horn. Do you guys know what a grab horn is? Do you no. ever watch Fantastic no. Beasts? Oh yes. Which one is so the grab horn though? The grab horn is this big creature with tentacles on its face. Okay. It's like massive with horns. It's okay. really interesting. Yeah. So you get that at the very, very end. And this thing is like massive. So you, you get to charge and like charge over your enemies and it hit and he kills your enemies. Mm. It's kind of fun. Okay. Um, and then also what I found fun is you get a fun house elf who is actually helping you out in the room of requirement named Deke. So it's kind of like your Dobby, except he's a lot more calm. Mm, okay. he's, he's not like all over Dobby. He mm -hmm. has the calm, helpful Dobby vibes that mm -hmm. I love. Yeah. So they're, they intertwined a lot of characters that have um, lineage of characters that we love from the original Harry Potter. So there is actually a Professor Weasley. She is kind of like very much like a McGonagall vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, she teaches transfiguration. Uh, sh her relation um, has to do, of course, with Ron and his family, obviously. Uh, there's four generations in between them. So she could possibly be Ron's great, great aunt or a distant cousin. And it does seem like she's married. Um, doesn't seem like she's married or had any children. Uh, so it'd be assumed that the lineage of one of her siblings led to Sep uh, Septimus Weasley, who married uh, Cedril Black, which is Neg which is Negalus's Black's granddaughter, and they had Arthur. I forgot Arthur was from the Black family. Yeah. Huh. That's weird. Yeah. Um, I can't keep track of all these JK. I can't. Right. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's a student named Gareth who's a fifth year a fifth year Gryffindor with you if you choose Gryffindor, um, and he is believed to be the great great grandfather of Arthur, or not Arthur of Ron. Okay. So, yeah. Um, of course, there's Phineas Black, which we already talked about. We've talked about him a lot. Um, and then there's Ominous Gaunt. He is a Slytherin, and if you guys. Remember what we've talked about. Gaunt is the family name of Tom Riddle, the, mm -hmm. his mom's side. Mm -hmm. And um, they've theorized that um, Marvolo Gaunt was the sibling. So, okay. So in uh, in the storyline, you have the chance to learn um, the unforgivable curses. You you can learn them if you want. I've chosen not to, unless mm -hmm. until I play Slytherin, then I will. But um, <laughs> you you get to learn him well ominous is one who knows them but he won't teach him to you because he was like he had a bad experience with cruciatus so he actually so we think that marvelo marvalo Mar marvalo mm -hmm. um who is in voldemort's line uh was the one who put the curse on ominous so ominous would be like tom's great uncle okay of some sort okay which is just weird uh, and then there's another character in there called Constant Dagworth. She's not like a um, a big character in the in the game, but she is related to she's related in the Granger their line and is believed to be related to Hermione, is what they're thinking. And then of course there's uh, Garibald uh, Ollivander, who is the probably great maybe grandfather or great grandfather of our Ollivander depending mm -hmm. on how old he is in the books which I don't know if we know mm -hmm. um and then Victor Rookwood who is the um descendant of Augustic Augustic Augustus Rookwood um who we hear about in the Potter series mm -hmm. uh throughout time so those are some of the the connections that they did and you can play this game on PlayStation 4, 5, PC, Xbox One, uh the Xbox Series XS and the Switch so lots of places to find it yeah. nowadays it's like remember when we were younger if you well I don't know if Sammy you played much video games but when we were younger it was like okay if it like it would only come out on either PlayStation or Xbox mm -hmm. it wouldn't come out on anything else yeah. everything Brand else Wars. yeah 
There's mm-hmm. not as much wars anymore when it comes to brands. No, they really sound everything. Yeah. But it, I mean, it is a really fun game. Um, and it's, it's cool that you get to kind of get to be the hero, right. uh, in this, in this Hogwarts place and you get to go around to all the boroughs. So there's like different hamlets and boroughs, which is what they call like their towns. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can, you can travel to them during, like, there's not like a, they didn't set it up where there's like a strict schedule for your classes. Like you have certain quests that include the classes that you need to do to like further on the story. Um, but it's, uh, I don't know. It's a lot of fun. I'm probably going to play it after we get off of here today. Right. You got me so curious. I have to look up images now. That actually looks pretty incredible. It's like, amazing. It is. Yeah, I've seen it on TikTok. I've watched Tom Felton playing. Nice. <laughs> That's so fun. Yeah, you should look it up. He does. He's had little videos of him playing, and of course, uh-huh. he's this like worst Slytherin. And I think he did learn all of, of the curses and everything. To because he's Tom. Because he was drinking. Well, he pondered it, if I recall. He did, he did think about it, and then he's like, "Yeah." Because. <laughs> if i think he's a gryffindor like on pottermore when he did pottermore all those years ago he's yeah i don't think he was a slytherin yeah mm-hmm. he doesn't seem like yeah. a slytherin like in real no Mm-mm. Mm-mm. no yeah i've played through gryffindor um well i'm almost so i played through gryffindor once and now that and then after i knew what i was doing i restarted as gryffindor so i could actually do it correctly because mm-hmm. i felt like i was I didn't do it as best as I could. Mm-hmm. And I've also done Ravenclaw, which the the um, room for Ravenclaw is really cool. Um, mm-hmm. the, yeah. Because we never see that. We only see nope. Slytherin and Gryffindor. Mm-hmm. I haven't done Hufflepuff yet. That's my next wow. one after I finish it. Finish Gryffindor. I just haven't gotten to it yet. But yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wish I had a stronger computer. I would... Tr- probably get this i'm only working off a laptop so Mm. yeah i didn't know if i was gonna get it um but brett has and he had two xboxes just from having them over the years and he brought me one of his so i could down so he could buy it for me and i could play it Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah, Yeah, he's i i have not read since february Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) oh goodness um yeah any questions about that game i don't have any Mm -mm. okay i really didn't know how to transition (laughs) no i gotcha i I definitely i can definitely see why it's so like why you're so into it Mm -hmm. yeah it looks fun clips of it it's like it's really you know you feel like you're there Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly you really do and they're talking about a sequel so they're talking about it like continuing at least to six years so it's it's had a pretty great response Mm -hmm. so i wouldn't be shocked if we get a sixth and seventh year out of it i just wish i wish i wish they would have started at year one and worked the way through because that Mm -hmm. would have been amazing Mm -hmm. but it's okay it's fine i understand Mm -hmm. all right wizarding world of harry potter at universal florida Mm -hmm. um okay so I just have a little bit of information about it. I didn't want to go into much of a deep dive because I wanted to be able to, for us to talk about what we like about it and just different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there are two different lands uh, for Hogwarts in the two different parks. So Universal has like their regular Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure, if you've never been down to the Florida one. Um, in Universal, they have Diagon Alley. Uh, and then in the Islands of Adventure, they have Hogsmeade with the replica of the um, Hogwarts uh, castle mm-hmm. in it. What I didn't realize until I was doing the research is that um, Ho- Hogsmeade actually was the one to open first in June of 2010 in Islands of Adventure. And they didn't open Diagon Alley until July of 2014. Mm. So they did it. I would have thought they would have worked on Diagon Alley first, but apparently I was wrong. I always um, thought they came out at the same time. I yeah, I had no I idea. I didn't know there was a fourth no clue either. Okay. Sure. Yeah. 
the Wizarding World of Harry Potter's Grand Opening Ceremony took place on June 16th with book series author JK and the film series actors Dan, Rupert, Emma, Michael uh, Gambon, Robbie, Tom, Matthew Lewis, James and Oliver Phelps, and Bonnie Wright, as well as the Universal Orlando Resort officials and representatives, of course. The ceremony, uh, which was produced by Universal Orlando Events Production in conjecture with Think Group, concluded with a firework display and a performance by the Orlando Philharmonic Orchestra conducted by the original series composer, John Williams. Wow. Why were we not there? I was living in Florida when this Holy happened. Holy cow. John Williams was right there. Right there. I was right in there, you guys. Right there. Actually, no, I think I was home that month, but still. Wow. still, still. Where were still. you, Dan? Huh? Where were you? probably in tampa june 2010 no you might have been in california Uh, that'd be about far i i was yeah that that was my entering my senior year at seu so i actually would have been in tampa at the time would you have been in tampa when did you go to california uh spring of 2011 so january to but you walked in so did you walk early i walked and then it was it had something to do I forget honestly the reason why it was something how I could schedule my LA trip because it also counted as an internship. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly don't even remember why it worked out that way, but basically I didn't sign up in time, so I was able to do it after I walked. So gotcha. I walked and then did the whole LA thing. Yeah, I mean I'm glad you walked because you oh, you yeah, and I got sure. to walk together. Um, but yeah, I didn't I didn't really I forgot you went after you walked. Mm-hmm. But yeah, John Williams was there. That would have been amazing. I walked mm-hmm. by there. I stood where he stood. Mm-hmm. We all did. Yeah. Yeah. And then on June 18th, 2014, the Diagon Alley red carpet premiere took place with uh, uh, Don, how do you say his name? Um, Dom, Dom Hall. Hall. Dom, no. Dom Hall. Dom Hall. Gleason Hall? was there. Gleason was there. Uh, Bonnie. <laughs> Um, Ivana, Matthew, James and Oliver, Tom, Robbie, Warwick Davis, and Helena Bonhan. Bonhan. Helena? Helena Bonham Carter was there for those of you who would like us to stop struggling with this. (laughs) I am struggling. Uh, New photos of Diagon Alley were later released the same night, and the official opening date was announced publicly by Universal Orlando President Bill Davis. Um, King's Cross Station opened July 1st of 2014, as well as Hogwarts Express Hogsmeade Station at Island of Adventure. And and then um, they officially opened July 8th. So, okay, yeah. And hmm. uh, it just, I mean, it makes sense. You probably want to do the castle first and Hogsmeade, like, mm, yeah, it makes sense. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but of course you have attractions in both of these rides. Um, what I didn't realize is I, so there's a movie I watched. What was it? It was one of the, the crappy later on, bring it on movies. Like one of the, I think it was like four or three, maybe, Mm -hmm. um, where they are doing their competition at universal and that dragon coaster was still there. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize that they tore that down when they did Hogsmeade. I was mm-hmm. unawares of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the rides that came in to Hogsmeade when they opened up in 2010 um, was uh, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey and Flight of the Hippogriff. Hag- Hagrid's magical creature motorbike adventure took over the dragon coaster because it was like it was some dragon name and then Ooh, they dragon. switched it to the dragon challenge when Hogsmeade opened and then they completely tore down and did Hagrid's creatures motorbike adventure rest in peace to my favorite role. that was called, it's called dueling dragons that was dueling cool. dragons thank yeah. you easily one of the best ones in uh adventure i'm surprised they destroyed it for this i am too it broke my heart i mean i love the harry potter stuff but uh, yeah saying goodbye to dueling dragons was uh that was hard yeah they couldn't make that fit in the the theme or at least i i have no idea Mm -hmm. i don't know where it was i was i've never been to universal before harry potter Mm -hmm. okay yeah no it's pretty much the uh not the hagrid's one but the other one the one where your feet are dangling 
Like it's it's a dangling ride, but you're all it's also a simulator. What's it called? The is that, that's the I forbidden that journey the... one. Forbidden journey. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's forbidden. Yeah. So that what used to be Dueling Dragons. That whole like when you're waiting in line, like the castle. Uh huh. That was the castle of Dueling Dragons. They just added oh. Harry Potter stuff. Oh. But the overall aesthetic is more or less the same. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. See, I mean, we really need to go on these rides when it's just you and I. I can't do the rides. I'll do the queue, but I'm not doing this. I can't Why? do this simulator thing. That is going to make me sick, and I'm not going to do that. There's absolutely But you do no a way. simulator it with, with uh, we do uh, Star Tours. It's not the same. not the same. It's, it is not the same weird. from what I've read. Yeah. Thank you, no, Dan. No, yeah, no, no, everything no, I've like, read, I'm not doing it. I am not going to feel I've never sick. read anything about it. I don't know anything you, about you it. You should. There are so many people who come off of it and feel terrible afterwards or get the like, forbidden physically journey? sick. Yes. I, I have a very okay, high we'll, tolerance. We'll do the other two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a very high tolerance for stuff like this. And even I was like, all right, I'm done. That's, yeah, that's, that's not, I'm, I nope. Think that's the one that goes through the castle. You can walk through it and then just be like, oh, I yeah. can't do the ride and then just dip out. You can do that. Yeah, I've known several oh. people who've done that. But yeah. I mean, like, you're, you've, you've been on roller coasters where you have a harness and your feet are dangling, right? You've been no. on those type. Oh, I have. About? I've done okay. that. Yeah. Dan, so, I don't do roller coasters. I Disney. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but basically it's that meets a very high G version of Star Tours. So your feet are dangling, you're in a harness, you go all the way back. Mm -hmm. Like in some ways you go almost not fully backwards, but like you're lying on your back tilted backwards at one point. Mm -mm. And that's just one of many directions you go and you're in front of a simulator screen while that is happening. No. And actual fire comes at you from a dragon, like, like very, very close to you. I mean, wow. I felt the heat. It's okay. very intense. It's awesome. I enjoyed it, but it's very intense. Okay. Okay. I good. Um, <laughs> no, thank you. I just I can't do I'm, that simulator. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. no. Never mind. It's not what I was thinking. If you meant when it when you meant a simulator. Oh yeah. I don't it's, know what I thought not, you meant. It but... ain't Star Tours. It ain't Star Tours. Ain't no. Star yeah. Tours. I've read enough Star about Tours it to then. know. Yes. I know my limits, and I was like, <laughs> I am not attempting this. No. No. Yeah. Well, we'll do the family friendly one. <laughs> Flight of the Hippogriff is probably okay. <laughs> <laughs> we looked at that one, right? That one, yeah. The one for this, like, cute. for two and up or something like that. I would yeah, I think so. It's really cute, but super short and super rickety. It looks like the it. Oh, yeah. it looks like it. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. precious though. It really is. Yeah. I mean, you're Hagrid's voice the whole time. So. <gasps> oh, that might be worth it then. Just that's definitely that. worth it to hear right. okay. Robbie Coltrane. Mm-hmm. Okay. Heck yeah. Tight, you kids. <gasps> adorable okay yeah. okay we're doing it we can do we that because to. of robbie culture okay yes and it's acceptable um, mm -hmm. um and then other things in hogsmeade is you i felt okay i'm not gonna lie when we were there this past because that was my first time in hogsmeade with you and robbie and brett mm -hmm. but i feel like there's not much there's not no there's really not no. um there was three you could go into the three broomsticks and eat which we already ate so there was no reason to go in there mm -mm. um honey dukes and then Dervis and Bangs, which is, I mean, it's, um, at least that store is in Hogwarts Legacy. So I don't remember if it was in the books, but it's a merch store. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, there's really not much in Hogsmeade. Mm -mm. But, but Toad's, the Toad Choir was cute. That was very cute. Girl. That was hilarious. Yeah, the Slytherin, yeah, that actress, she did a very good job. <laughs> she was so funny. So probably my favorite side is Diagon Alley. I don't know about you guys, but yes. Diagon Alley has uh, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. It's the only big crazy gate, crazy ride. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have um, Hogwarts Express that goes between the two parks for uh, to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that that even though we were really scrunched in there, it was really cool <laughs> to like cool. feel like you were. On yeah, the train. I wish what we didn't you? have like extra people in there. I wish it was just like one family. I wish it was just us. Yeah. I didn't like that part, but. We had strangers that were way too close. Mm. There's too many way of us close. in the car. Yeah. But it was really cool. Like it had, there was um, a suitcase that had Lupin's name on it. And um, we, there was a point where we had the Dementors come through. Oh, nice. And it was, it was really, it was a cute little ride. It's the mostly only thing simulation. And the only thing I remember that bothered me was like the voices were wrong because they didn't yes. use actual actors. And I remember actively us looking at each other like, who is that? Yep. <laughs> That's not her, my knee. Who is who yeah. is talking outside my door? I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. You and I kept giving each other the eye. We're like, 
But if you ignore that, you know, yeah. <laughs> what's happening? Um, and then of course you have a bunch of amazing shops in Diagon Alley going in and out. You of course have um the twins shop that you can go to. Um, you got Ollivanders, you have uh uh what was some of the other ones that I can't think of their names now. Mm-hmm. We the leaky cauldron, you can go eat at the leaky cauldron. Yes. Um but I don't know. There's just a bunch of stuff. But yeah, but Nocturne I'll... Alley back there. I don't even yes. know if written that down, but yeah, Nocturne no, Alley. No, I did not. Yes. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you. Nocturne Alley to go back to um, Bo- Bo- Borgs and Borgen Burks. and Burks. Borgen and Burks. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So it's it's just an amazing kind of, like, the first time you and I, and I went there with my brother, I remember walking through, like, the, the brick wall and looking up, and I'm just like, I'm home. I mean, I'm on my like fifth home because Dizzy's first home, but I'm home. Mm-hmm. It's another edition. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's like another one. Yeah. Um, because outside of, of Diagon Alley, you have, of course, the night bus where you can see the the little shrunken heads. And I think they do a show every once in a while. And then you can see Sirius's house with Preacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, peeking through the window. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Um but Ollivander is so kind of like um, we've talked about here. We've talked about on the show about Star Wars and how Star Wars in Hollywood Studios does like a lightsaber uh, experience where you get to create a lightsaber and different things. Ollivander also has an experience for you as well that you pay extra for and you go back and I don't know what they do because it didn't say, but you can actually go back and do like an Ollivander's experience to get your wand. Mm. That's cool. But it, it, I mean, you really walk in and it's it's just like the show floor to ceiling of so just many wands. wand boxes and mm-hmm. boxes of wands and they've gotten so much cooler because when me and my brother went in 17 um they're just like these and we, i think i showed them on one of the earlier episodes it's just very plain unless mm-hmm. you got like a character mm-hmm. um now they're like just beautiful like crafted like they're actually mm-hmm. putting some effort into them probably because they didn't know if they were gonna make money or not i don't know maybe no clue I don't um, know why they would think that. I mean, everyone would want their own customizable wand. I mean, I would they assume would so. Bank on that. I know. So I don't know what was going on with that. No idea. Mm. But yeah, see me. What What are your thoughts on just Wizarding World? So I agree. Diagon Alley, I think, is far and away better than Hogsmeade. And we started in Diagon Alley and then went to Hogsmeade. And then we were like, oh, <laughs> is this the entire area? Okay, do you want to go? I'm done. <laughs> like, And it was so hot that day. I don't think that helped. With the fake snow, I was just like, this is oh not gosh. doing it for me. <laughs> it's like 100 million degrees out here and you got the fake snow everywhere. Yeah. But I mean, it's a cute area. I would like to go back, you know, when the weather is not so terrible and actually maybe enjoy the atmosphere a little more of Hogsmeade. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Diagon Alley, you're right. As soon as you walk in there, it's just, it's so amazing. It's, yeah. it's, you can't describe it. It's exactly what you picture. I mean, you've seen it in the movies, but even just from reading the books, like it's exactly what you picture when you walk in there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the, I think the Weasley shop is probably my favorite, favorite area just because they did such a good job on the theming, I think, of creating that in the atmosphere. And I really like Nocturne Alley because it's creepy and weird and, you know, I like that kind of stuff. So. And it's cold. Yeah. And it's so, sh- yeah, it's so shady back there and you can sit on like benches and book. yeah, enjoy not being in the sun. That's pretty nice too. And yeah, and Borgen and Burks is very weird and creepy and I love it. So those are probably my two favorite things from there. But, and the castle, I mean, the castle was pretty cool in Hogsmeade. I mean, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. you can't really beat that, I guess, mm-hmm. seeing Hogwarts. That was pretty yeah. magical yeah yeah it is pretty magical to just it's kind of like seeing the <laughs> cinderella's castle it's that kind of effect of like oh <gasps> mm-hmm. i can see that yeah so well when hogwarts is like we're going to talk about it more probably next episode when we talk about the hbo special but mm-hmm. when hogwarts becomes so much a part of your identity growing up in your life and yeah. what you are it i mean it's mm-hmm. it, it it's part of what shapes you like mm-hmm. i can tell you my three big pillars of fictional worlds that shape me disney star wars potter like mm-hmm. all three so anytime that i see something of it it's like it it's it's oh it's emotional yeah a good emotional mm-hmm. right right absolutely yeah mm-hmm. yeah 
Um, yeah, Leaky Cauldron, the food is, I love the food. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. You can kind of choose from, it, it is very authentic, like British meals mm -hmm. to choose from. Um, but butterbeer is my favorite. I could live on butterbeer. Frozen, cold, hot. I, I would mm -hmm. love to just drink butterbeer all day. It's so good. But that's me. Nice. Sammy, did you like, did you have butter butterbeer? I don't like that kind of flavored stuff. So no. Uh -uh. Oh, no, Poor I just thing. did the, what was the water? Gilly water or whatever. Oh, the gilly, the gilly weed water? Yeah, then gilly weed. I was just like, I'm paying a lot of money Is for this, this nonsense. Swamp water. <laughs> for this nonsense bottle, but okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's theme park life. Everything is just overpriced. I know. I usually remember to bring water and I had forgotten that day. So I was like, dang it. Yeah. It's like, I'm thirsty mm -hmm. and here's $7 for that much Dasani water. Mm hmm. Thank, thanks. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan, what about you? Uh, I, so the biggest thing that, I mean, I, I, you're, I completely agree about, um, Hogsmeade. Like I was, I was expecting a lot more from Hogsmeade when I walked mm -hmm. through, cause I did, I actually did diagonally first. So mm -hmm. walking okay. through that Same. and seeing how immersive that was, mm -hmm. you know, cause in my mind, like Islands of Adventure has always kind of been somewhat superior to Universal. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I figured they'd go more all out with it. And then walking through, it's like, really? That's it? It's like a cardboard set. Kind of, yeah. That's like, that's like what's It is. Through. Yeah. yeah like, just kind of stare at it and you're like, okay, cool. I guess okay. I'll go. Mm -hmm. right. It's like when you visit like uh, a set, of, you know, visiting a set from your favorite sitcom or something. It's like, oh no, this isn't an actual house. It's just plywood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yep. but uh, but that, but I completely agree about Diag Diagon Alley. Like it's so immersive. Like once you step through that whole thing, you know, I mean, you just you, it, there's nowhere you can look that there's not part of that world around. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that's really uh, really great to see. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. I was kind of disappointed in the whole butterbeer thing. I was expecting something like specific, and it was a root beer float in my opinion. But that's just me. I don't know. I got a frozen one this year and it was it was very different than like the normal one you get. And maybe it was really good. What, okay. Maybe that's what because I literally just got like or I, my friend got like just the regular one and I tasted it and I was like tastes like a root beer float. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. I was, but I, I like butterscotch. Like, that's so like I really good. enjoy butterscotch. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I may have to try the frozen because I'm hoping to get back there again this year. So hopefully I could, you know, yeah. The frozen's really, I really enjoyed the frozen. That's what I got on our hot day that we were there. And I was mm -hmm. so happy I did. Gotcha. That's cool. Um, what else? I, I really hope one day that I can actually get to Islands of Adventure and actually do the Hagrid's Magical Creatures motorbike without the line being like 200 plus minute wait. I don't know if that's literally what it was last time mm -mm. I was there. It was like a, I think it was like 145 minutes, they said. I don't know what it was when we were there. I don't remember, but that's terrible. Yeah. Oof. Mm -mm. Yeah. That's a that's, long wait. It was it's crazy. like, that's like Rise of the Resistance long. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. No, thank you. Avatar long. <laughs> mm -hmm. Always. Yeah, yeah, I was so like, yeah, I was so just because like everyone I talked to was raving about that one. So that was like the main one I was looking forward to see. Uh huh. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, hmm. uh, hopefully, I can hit that one this year. But yeah, um, yeah. Hippograph, like I said, was cute. Um, you know, yeah. I really enjoyed the forbidden journey. The forbidden journey um, ride, despite my beloved dueling dragons being replaced. Mm. Um, you know, and I do have kind of a funny story about doing the Gringotts ride. Okay. Uh, you know, okay. So do you know how I'm always making my weird little crush references to Bellatrix, you know, the, <laughs> all that. So there actually is a story behind that. And the story is basically, um, I was on there with my crew from uh, Bush Gardens last year. And, um, you know, we did that. Uh, we went to the, the Gringotts ride, whatever. And I never been on any of it before. So I was just kind of going with the flow, having a jolly old time, right? So you know me on roller coasters. If you ever been on a roller coaster with me, I just say whatever random stuff comes to my mind. I just shout it out because 
that's part of the fun. That had to be fun. <laughs> you should see the most random stuff that I have said. Like, I've had fire blown out me and be like, that wasn't nice. Why'd you do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I'm in the very back with uh, one of my friends from, uh, from, from work. And we're going through the ride, swinging back and forth, having a good time. And it gets to the scene with Bellatrix. And it's the scene, like, you know, and I'm, I'm still just in the moment. And then it gets to the scene where she pulls out that giant, like, lightning whip thing and she's like mm -hmm. at us without missing a beat both me and my friend in unison shout as loud as we could mommy sorry mommy sorry mommy sorry <laughs> oh like, my god in front of the entire boat I, i'm pretty sure everyone was annoyed with us i thought it was hilarious <laughs> so yeah so whenever i make a joke that's literally what i'm referencing that's oh that boy okay so <laughs> makes sense but mm -hmm. that's hilarious yeah. it's pretty funny if any of them are listening right now, you know what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Dan, did you get to watch the HBO special? Uh, I've, I've seen it before. I didn't get to, I, I only was able to kind of skim some highlights of it this time around, but I have seen it before, so. Okay, because there's a lot of Bellatrix in it. So I was oh, like, yeah. as the Bellatrix oh, Helena. was coming up, I was like, hm, Dan. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, Helena. Pretty sure I spelled her name wrong throughout my whole show notes too. I think you called her I Helen think I at one point. Her Helen. Yeah. I think I put Helen on there and, and I forgot the A. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I can see why Daniel Radcliffe had a crush on her. So he adorable. The special. We're talking about that next week. It oh. is so adorable. So adorable. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, only oh. I was 10 years older. Yeah. If only. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. But I, it's, I mean, I wish that we could actually have just like a Hogwarts theme park. Yeah. Instead of just an area. Instead of just the areas, because mm -hmm. number one, they don't really match anything else. Like when it comes to Universal, like I feel like Universal is its own entity and then Hogwarts and stuff is its own entity mm -hmm. where it doesn't really flow in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think the Simpsons is right next to it at the entrance of Diagon Alley. And that just doesn't make sense to me, mm. but that's, yeah. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a universal person. So none of it really makes sense to me. I'm still mad at than... the Simpsons because it replaced back to the future. See, that sucks because I love Back I to the Future. Love Back that to would the have future. been amazing. Right. Yeah. It's literally beat for beat, like what the Back to the Future ride was just replaced with a Simpsons storyline. Why? I don't know. It's I mean, so I know why, thing. but why? Oh it's my so gosh. Everybody know. loves Back to the Future. Right? <sighs> At least I hope everyone loves Back to the Future. It's I amazing. Mean, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, Apparently, speaking of Back to the Future, um some anniversary happened and michael j fox actually came out into the world for an anniversary thing yeah they had the like future. panels and stuff yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so it nice it's cool to see him out and about with them and mm -hmm. celebrating yeah yeah i was wondering how he was doing so at least he's doing well enough to come out in public mm -hmm. yeah i mean you know he's as much as he can yeah mm -hmm. i know there's mm -hmm. a special on him that came out recently like a documentary on like his whole story really mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah i saw it somewhere i'll have to look for that and tell brett about it because he he loves back to the future it's mm -hmm. one of his favorites that's you know how you were saying about like the like franchise story arcs that mm -hmm. have shaped you back to the future is one of those for me like mm -hmm. nice you know, like star wars back to the future and probably something else but like mm -hmm. i am who i am because of back to the future in a lot yeah. of mm -hmm. yeah so i'm pretty sure i would respect like, yeah and um slight personal but uh my my grandpa actually uh had parkinson's the last oh okay. years of his life oh wow uh, and he was also a musician so he kind of got uh, me into the guitar as mm -hmm. did michael j fox mm -hmm. very personal to me so if mm -hmm. i watched that documentary i i'd, I'd be a rubber face clown like, mm, yeah. probably i understand mm -hmm. but, i was a rubber face clown watching hbo special for harry potter it was awful <laughs> I was like, why did I rewatch this? This is why I'm so puffy because I finished it right before we started. <laughs> I had time to fan myself, you know, before uh, getting ready. But no, that's so cool. I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Dan. I didn't know yeah. you got your music love from your grandpa and mm -hmm. and his fight with. That's Curtis. a very cool that's story. Awesome. Really mm -hmm. He was he was my own personal Doc Brown. Oh, I love that. That's so sweet. That's so nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
God rest his soul. Mm-hmm. Well, when when did you lose him? Uh, 2006. Oh, mm-hmm. so right when we started college. That literally was my like hardest and most profound transition from that life to college was losing my grandfather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because did it did it happen before we started or was it right before it was July? Okay. July 14th was the okay. Year. It's like, huh. I don't remember it happening during school. No, yeah, we didn't know each other during that time. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so it was like literally a month later is when I go, you know, it was, it really was one of those like, it was like the end of a movie, you know, like mm-hmm. this tragic happen- tragic thing happens and then, but like it's the start of something new. So it's like this whole, you know, mm-hmm. bittersweet s- symbolic thing, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Which slightly changing so- subjects um you graduated in 05 right high school yes yes okay so technically I was thinking about this the other day because I was listening to our podcast and um we were talking about how because of Voldemort there it's the reason why Sammy and I didn't get our letters technically Dan if it was real you would have started the year that Snape was headmaster and you would have been there for the Caro twins. You would have been there for the final battle. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Because you would have started sixth grade in 98. Yeah, that was about right. Okay. Wow. So wait, so the final battle is in final battle from the movie. I think so. I think you did. I yeah, it was like right? May May second, ninety eight, right? So and they start. Well, maybe you wouldn't have. Hold on. We start in the fall. Oh no! Never mind. Would he have still been off by? I don't know. Would he be there? I feel like this is hurting my brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's so terrible to say. Potentially, you could have been there. Potentially, Potentially. or at least aware of it. Like as I was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because my birthday falls right in the summer of when I'm about to start the next semester. So it's always like, I always get slightly confused. Like I'm always either like a little bit older or a little bit younger, mm. depending on like which age group and stuff. But yeah, 98, I think I was, no, 99 is when I was entering sixth grade. So I was still in fifth grade in 98. But we entered in 99. Are you sure? I'm trying to do the math. I yes. lost count of where I was. Yes, because you and I met in 99. Wait. I think I did my math wrong. Never mind. Let's yeah. move on. <laughs> this is too too hard for us today. I think I think I did my math wrong. It's okay. It's fine. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking about it, I'm like, well, because in my brain, I'm like, okay, we missed it by a year, but maybe we actually missed it by two. Because it was May of 98, not fall of 98. I yeah, know. It was anyway. It was May. Mm-hmm. It was May. So maybe I'm off by two years. Okay, never mind. Sorry. <sighs> anyway, I I don't remember. Well, fall of '98, fifth grade, Mrs. Weston's class. I don't know if the girl, the friend, was friends with me at that time, or did she hate me at that time? I don't know. She switched every other month. Mm-hmm. Um, I had I did not have great friends in in middle or in elementary school. Not until sixth grade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and friends for life. Yep. Um, okay, well, we we've I mean, we've kind of gone off topic and finished up. So let's wrap yeah. up. Anything else about Wizarding World? Mm-mm. No. Go check it out if you have not yet. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Very, very cool. Yes. Mm-hmm. so uh next week we're going to be talking about the hbo special the 20th anniversary of harry potter which is just so weird to think that it's been like they hit the 20 years back in 20 whatever year it came out we are um, old. we are old uh, <laughs> and, and it's just interesting to watch them talk about how they're old i'm like oh you say you're old then we're old and uh, but anyways mm-hmm. <laughs> check out our um facebook instagram tiktok all the things and uh we will see you guys next week for yeah. our HBO special. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Pixie Dust Twins podcast featuring Dan. 
The show is written and produced by Ashley and Sammy, except for those manifestos, which are all written by Dan himself. Intro and audio editing by Sammy, logo created by Ashley. The show is produced as part of the Limitless Broadcasting Network. Make sure you check out all of our other shows and have a magical day.